Have you ever found yourself downloading music or saving audio files and suddenly facing that choice? MP3 or WAVE? It's a decision that looks simple on the surface, but underneath, it's tied to sound quality, storage space, and even how we experience music. Today, we're diving into the world of MP3 and WAVE to really figure out what sets them apart. By the end, you'll know exactly when to use each one and why it matters. Right here on History of Simple Things. Before we break down the technical stuff, let's rewind a little. WAVE, short for Waveform Audio File Format, was created in 1991 by Microsoft and IBM. It was designed as a universal format to store audio on Windows computers, and it quickly became the standard for professional sound recording. Think of WAVE as the raw version of audio, like an untouched photo straight from a high-end camera. MP3, on the other hand, came a few years later in the mid-90s. Its real breakthrough moment happened during the rise of the internet and portable music players. Suddenly, people wanted a way to store thousands of songs without filling up their hard drives. That's where MP3 came in. It was built around the idea of compression, making music files smaller while still sounding good enough for the average listener. So what's the biggest dividing line between WAVE and MP3? Compression. A WAVE file stores audio in an uncompressed form. Every little detail of the sound, the highs, the lows, the subtle breaths of a singer, is preserved exactly as it was recorded. That's why WAVE files are often called lossless. Nothing gets thrown away. MP3 files, on the other hand, use something called lossy compression. The system analyzes the audio and removes parts of the sound that are considered less noticeable to human ears. The result is a much smaller file size, but at the cost of some detail. To put it into perspective, a single three-minute song saved as a WAV file can easily be around 30 to 50 megabytes. The same song as an MP3? Maybe three to five megabytes. That's about a tenth of the size. Back in the days of limited storage and slow internet connections, this difference was a game changer. MP3 made it possible to download songs in minutes instead of hours, and it made the rise of iPods and MP3 players possible. Without MP3, the early 2000s music revolution probably wouldn't have looked the same. Here's the million dollar question. Can the average person actually hear the difference between MP3 and WAVE? The answer is both yes and no. If you're listening through regular earbuds or laptop speakers, most people won't notice much of a difference between a high quality MP3 and a WAVE file. But if you're using studio headphones or professional speakers, the WAVE file will sound fuller and more natural. That's because MP3 compression can sometimes flatten the sound. It might shave off very high frequencies, reduce dynamic range, or make certain instruments blend together in ways they weren't meant to. Audiophiles often describe MP3 as sounding thin compared to the richness of wave. One important piece of the MP3 puzzle is something called bitrate. This is measured in kilobits per second, or kbps. A higher bitrate means more data is being stored, which usually translates to better sound quality. For example, a 128 kilobits per second MP3 is considered low quality by today's standards. It was common in the early days of file sharing, but now it sounds flat and washed out. On the other hand, a 320 kilobits per second. MP3 is much closer to CD quality, and for most listeners, it's almost indistinguishable from a WAV file. This flexibility is part of what made MP3 so popular, 
you could choose the balance between quality and file size that work best for your situation. So when should you choose WAVE over MP3? The answer usually comes down to professional use. If you're recording music, podcasts, voiceovers, or anything that will go through editing, you'll want WAVE. Because WAVE files keep every bit of detail, they're perfect for mixing, mastering, and processing. You don't want to lose sound quality at the source, especially if you're planning to compress the audio later for distribution. Another area where WAVE shines is archiving. If you're saving something for the long term, like old recordings or important audio projects, you want the full quality version. On the flip side, MP3 is still king when it comes to convenience. If you're listening to music on your phone, streaming on a platform with limited storage, or sharing audio files quickly, MP3 is the way to go. Streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Music rely heavily on compression to deliver music quickly and smoothly. Most of the time, you're hearing something closer to MP3 than WAVE, even if the service calls it a high-quality stream. MP3's smaller size also makes it ideal for podcasts, audiobooks, or any situation where you're prioritizing speed and accessibility over pristine sound. As storage continues to grow and internet speeds get faster, the need for heavy compression isn't as urgent as it once was. That's why we're seeing more services offer higher quality streams, sometimes even in lossless formats. But MP3 isn't going anywhere. Its universal compatibility and tiny file sizes still make it useful. On the other hand, WAVE will continue to be the gold standard in studios and professional settings. The real future might be about finding the perfect balance, formats that keep high quality while staying efficient for sharing and streaming. So, MP3 versus WAVE, what's the verdict? It really depends on your needs. If you want every ounce of detail for editing, mixing, or archiving, WAVE is the winner. If you're after convenience, portability, and smaller files, MP3 still gets the job done. At the end of the day, both formats have shaped how we listen to music and share audio. WAVE gave us professional clarity, while MP3 gave us portability and access. Together, they tell the story of how technology has shaped our relationship with sound. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.